Welcome to week two of AMU 4720 and today we're talking about constructing your literature review and how to work on your theoretical framework. So the first thing we need to think about is what is research, right? And research is a systematic attempt to provide answers to questions. So when we're doing research, we're asking all these big questions or sometimes small questions and we're trying to figure out what the answers are and how is it that the answers affect the world around us. So in order to do that, we need to look back and see what it is people have done before. And so what we need to do is to conduct a literature review or to construct a literature review. So a literature review is seen as a systematic method for identifying, evaluating, and interpreting the work produced by researchers, scholars, and other practitioners. So why do I need to do a literature review? Because without doing a literature review, without a literature review, you can't really understand what it is your topic is and what's been done before and what the gaps are so that you can figure out where you want your research to go or what gaps you want your research to fill. Now, some of the guidelines for writing a literature review, you've got to start by pointing out what it is your overall major research topic it is that you're going to focus on. And then you're going to identify the problems. Sometimes you can start at the global level and then bring it down to the micro level, but hopefully we want you to start with a manageable problem, right? And then you have to talk about why is it important for you to do this research? Now, when you're doing your literature review, the key is to not to try and cover every single thing about your topic. What you need to do is focus on the key issues that you think are going to be relevant to the research that you're doing. All right, because whatever you do in your literature review, this is going to be used as the background that this is why this research is important. This is why it's important for me to study this particular topic. It's very important that you cover every single one of the variables that are related to your topic so that you can explain what it is that's the relationship or the correlations between the things that you're studying. And then you have to structure that and then write your, write your literature review based on each one of those topics. For example, let's say we're studying, let's say we're studying censorship in Malaysia on Twitter, right? So the first thing you'd have to do is talk about Malaysia. You'd have to talk about democracy in Malaysia, what that democracy looks like, then how, how, how censorship plays into those democratic values. Then you have to talk about media, so the mainstream media in Malaysia and then alternative media and then why it is that people are, are moving to social media now to construct their argument, right? And then you can look at censorship on that social media platform. So that, that's the kind of structure you have to think about when you're putting your literature review together. Now, there are different ways of organizing a literature review. You have a to topical order, you have a chronological order, a problem cost solution order. You can move from a general to a specific, or you can move from a specific to something more general. So in that you can start with with Twitter and, and, and censorship and then move on to the broader context of Malaysia, right? So all of that's going to, the, the way you organize your literature review is going to depend on you and your supervisor, your own writing style, the way your thoughts flow and how you put that together with your supervisor. So after looking at the literature and you've summarized what's, what has been done and what needs to be done, then you have to remember that you have to say, this is why this is important. Why is my topic important? Why is it important for us to study K-pop? Why is it important for us to study interracial marriage? Why is it important for us to study censorship on Twitter? How does this, how does this help frame the wider argument about these things in your community and then in the in the world at large. 
And remember that citation is going to become important, so remember to cite all of the sources that you've used in your literature review. Even if you only use them once, you have to add a citation. So when you put your literature review together, it has to include an introduction, a summary, a critique of the journal articles that you've, that you've looked at, justifications for your research project, and a hypothesis of your research project. And what I'm going to do is on Moodle add some, add some basic literature review structures for you to have a look at. So some of the common errors you find when you're putting a literature review together. It's not logical. And so people reading your thesis have a really hard time figuring out where your story begins, where your story ends, and where it is that you're trying to go. The other thing is sometimes you don't focus on the nitty gritty details that you need to focus in order to push your study forward. And then sometimes the literature and the scholars that you've chosen don't necessarily relate to the direction you want to take your study in. Sometimes you don't cite enough references or sometimes the references you're cited are outdated. For example, if we're doing a study on Twitter, we're not going to be citing stuff from 1995, right? Twitter probably wasn't even taught of in 1995. So most of your sources are going to be current, like 2000, 2015, right? So the more current sources, those are the ones we want to focus on. That's not to say that, that some of the older sources, for example, on framing or on censorship, aren't going to be of value to your work. Now remember that when you put your literature review together, yes, you can cite other scholars, but you still have to put some of it in your own words. So you've got to, to para, paraphrase. You also have to make sure that your paraphrases or your summaries, they flow together and that you come to one con cohesive conclusion at the end, at the end of your theory, at the end of your literature review. Now, the most important thing I want to remind you of is plagiarism, right? So, Plagiarism is going to be very important when we're putting our putting our literature reviews together. So what I want you to to make sure that you're not that you're not doing is using somebody else's words without without citing them, using somebody else's ideas without citing them. If you're going to use somebody's exact words, make sure you put it in quotation marks and you put the citation at the end of it. All right. Try not to use other people's work when you're constructing your own thoughts and, and, uh, and ideas. And please don't have anybody else do your work. Your supervisors will know, they'll know if you're capable. And when you get to presentation, if you aren't able to answer some of the questions the audience asks or some of the faculty asks, then they're going to know you didn't do your own work. So now we move on to how you put your theoretical framework together. And for some people, this is going to be a huge task. Now, in order to put your theoretical framework together, you're going to have to do lots and lots of reading. I always say the wider you read, the more ideas you're able to you're able to formulate. So a theory helps to create questions, it helps to shape our research design design, it helps us to anticipate outcomes and how we can design helps us to figure out how we can design intervention. Right? So your theory is going to be the foundation for your for your research project, right? So most times when you're talking about theory, we're going to talk about deductive and inductive logic, right? And sometimes some theses are going to have one, some theses are going to have the other, and some theses incorporate both deductive and induct inductive logic. So what is deductive log logic? So when you're talking about deductive, you're talking about moving from a general idea to a more specific idea, right? So we're going to use this theory. For example, we're going to use framing theory, theory and, and apply it to the way newspapers are framed in Malaysia, right? And then we test that theory to see if it if it holds up. And so the example I have here is that the the, old, the general idea is that women are mortal, right? And so if I am a woman, therefore I must be I must be mortal, right? 
So when when we're going to constru- construct a theory or analyze a theory deductively, we have to give this specific topic, right? And then you're going to specify what is it your theory is trying to address. Is it trying to address a specific community? Is it trying to address a specific ethnicity, a specific gender? Right? Then we're going to identify what are the major concepts that go along with the phenomena that we're trying to examine. What kind of relationships happen between these phenomena? Then we're going to think about inductive logic. So with inductive logic, you're moving from a, a particular instance to something more general. So we're, we're going to, based on the, the facts that we have, what kind of theories can we surmise from the facts that we have at hand? So using the same example about women and mortality, if, we, if we're if we saying that I am mortal, right, then maybe we can deduce or induce, we can induce that all women may be mortal, right? If we're, if we're measuring everybody with the same yardstick. So when we're doing constructing a theory inductively, we're going to observe all aspects of social life. And then we're going to figure out what kind of patterns we can see from that. And can those patterns be applied across the board? All right. And so based on those patterns, then we can construct a theory to include all of these other variables, all of the variables we found when we're looking at for patterns, right? And then the other, the other thing too is, can I take the theory that I have inductively come up with and apply it to something else? Can this be used in another context? All right, so when we're looking at theory and we're looking at observation, right? We need to figure out if something is going to be a fluke or if there is going to be actual patterns that we can find from it, right? So this can help shape or direct the way we put our research together. Are we going to be able to make direct empirical observations based on whether we go with the inductive approach or whether we go with the with the deductive approach. So I always find this quote interesting. Theory is interested in the why of the question and not just the what and the how. So when we're putting our, our theories together, when we're trying to figure out the direction, what theoretical approach we want to take, we need to answer, we need to ask the question, why is it that we're taking this specific theoretical approach? And if you have any further questions about theory or putting the literature review together, I'm sure we're going to talk about them numerous times over the coming semester. This is just an introduction to get you started.